All right, so we are going to quickly do wireless and mobile networks. And in wireless, we will talk about CDMA, then 802.11, PHY, MAC, architecture, the same format, and the rate adoption. So first thing we do have to do on wireless is to code zeros and ones. Now we talked about coding before, now we have to talk a little bit more. So one way to code zeros and ones is that whenever I want to send a zero, I s select a code. I said my code is 01001010. This is my code. And you can select some other code. Everybody can select a different code. So whenever they send a zero, they send their code. And when they want to send a one, they send just the opposite of that code. But that way we can all talk at the same time on the wireless. Oh, you can all speak at the same time, but we are using different codes. So this is like language. You know, if, if all, we all spoke English, there will be a lot of noise, and, and we won't be able to understand anybody. But one person spoke English, one spoke Chinese, one pair spoke Chinese, one Spanish, one Hindi, and one so on and so on. There is no interference. <laughs> Right? Because everybody is tuned to their code. Right? Everything else doesn't make sense. So when we use a language that is our code division multiple access, CDMA. So how many bits do you need? Well, 10 bits will let 100,000, will let 2 raised to 10, maybe 1,000 people talk, but that will be too many. So generally we need the codes such that they are least interfering. I mean, if, if suppose one, speak, one spoke Mandarin and one spoke uh, some other version of Chinese, I don't know, then they will interfere. So you really want the codes to be very, very far away. Right? Yeah, so then we can all speak at the same time on the same frequency. That's the point. We don't need to change the frequency. We can all speak at the same time on the same frequency and not interfere. And the more longer code we use, more people can use it at the same time, yeah. So how does the receiver know what your language is? Yeah, right. So basically, you negotiate that. You are allocated. It's still like a frequency. How do you know which frequency to use? Somebody tells you that, okay, go ahead, two of you, please use this frequency. Uh, you know, somehow you negotiate that, okay, we are going to use this frequency or this, this code. So once, just like frequency division multiplexing, or time division multiplexing, here we have code division multiplexing. And this is the thing, CDMA is the thing that was invented by Qualcomm and that's how they made their billions, right? And today, every cell phone, everything that is 3G is just CDMA. Everything that is 3G is CDMA. So all of you use 3G, all of you use CDMA. All right? And, um, it is not used in 4G, by the way. It is not used in 2G, but in 3G, everything is CDMA. What about GSM is 2G. Okay? So it turns out in the days of 2G, everybody had a different method, but Qualcomm came about right in the 90s when the 2G was done, and so, this, so everybody agreed to 3G, that was the newest technology, um, 95 or something like that, some year. So 3G all over the world is CDMA. And 4G again gave up on CDMA, and they adopted something else which we will not teach in this course, so not, I'm not going to even spell that word. But um, that one, 4G, got rid of whole CDMA thing. But for 3G, we have CDMA. So signal bandwidth, now here's the problem with this though. Now you're sending bits which are very, very small, if you want to call these bits. We don't call them bits. We call them um, chips. Okay, you break a bit into chips. So, so there are 10 chips per bit here, as shown. And military will use 10,000 bits because they really know want anybody to know their code. 
So they use lots of chips. We use 10 chips. And we need to basically synchronize, like he asked, that, you know, how do we know? So we need to have some, some negotiation beforehand to, to select the code. And we want to make sure that the codes are not selected very close to somebody else, otherwise it will be interfering. So we need the codes which are orthogonal. Orthogonal means they don't affect at all, perpendicular. Now, what that means is that if you take 10 bits, you will find only certain number of codes which don't in interfere with each other. And again, we are not going to go to that detail as to what that means, but there is a lot of coding theory in there. But one thing you can understand very easily is that if you are not doing, if you are not doing the CDMA, then your bits will be long. And if you were to look into the frequency domain, then the frequency domain spectrum will look like this, where you have a lot of energy, a lot of power at certain frequency, which is basically, if suppose you do 10 bits per second, then basically at 10 hertz you will see a lot of power. On the other hand, if you do this, which is instead of 1 bit you send 10 bits, now you have power spread all over. It's not just here there is high power, but it is much wider. This is much narrower. Right? So that is why it is also called spread spectrum. We have spread the spectrum. We have spread it over the spectrum. So everybody is using the same spectrum, and they are, so they are spread, and they are using different codes. Okay. So here is an example from the book. So this sender selects this code, and it sends minus one and plus one, minus one and plus one, and it is better to say minus one plus one because then you can easily add and multiply two different codes. So this is one user, this is second user, this is a different code, this is a different code. So this user has minus one, that code, plus one, just the opposite code, this user has minus one, this code, plus one, the opposite code. When they are both transmitting on the wire, things mix up and instead of one minus one, one minus one, you get two minus two plus two, something like that, because you add up. So in the first slot, in the first chip, this one sends minus, and um, and its code is one, so it gives you minus one there, and this one sends minus also, and its code is one, so it also sends minus one, so this one's minus two. And so on and so forth. So you can basically write down that this is what is on the wire, I agree on the air. It goes all the way here, and now each of these people correlated with this code. So this person, whichever this person is, three ones is this first person. First person multiplies, uh, it correlates with this code. And after the correlation, it figures out that minus one was sent. Okay, in the first slot. And then it similarly can do in the second slot and plus one was sent. Yeah, yeah, right, but here, the combination here, let me just see, first, your first chip is minus one, and this one is plus one, so it is zero. Okay, the second chip is one, minus one, and this is minus one, so the second chip is minus two. Okay. Right, so basically, what is going to happen is, using that formula, you can calculate what is on the wire, and using similar formula, you can calculate what your person sent. You see, I mean, the, on the air it is minus two, plus two, plus two, whatever it is, right? But this is your code. So you correlate with that, and then you get this. Uh, you take the code, the code is C, Z is on the wire. You, you do this for M is equal to one through capital M, which is your 10 bits here, and that gives you D. And by the way, it will not give you perfect D. So you will not get 10 minus 1s here. You might get 8 minus 1s and 2 plus 1s, and then you say, okay, this looks like you know, minus 1 to me. Because of the noise and interferences, things are not always perfect as shown in this example. You know, you might get few here and there, yeah. In CDMA, uh, everybody broadcasts to everybody, and then the receiver like not everybody broadcasts everybody. Everybody talks to their partner, but somehow other people can listen. So, so the receiver, uh, why does the receiver like uh, interpret the others? 
No, the other receiver, you can put another receiver here too, which is not shown, and you can just do the same formula with their code, and they will get plus one, plus one. Yeah, but, but the, they are paired, right? I mean, the receiver and the sender are the pair, and they have decided a code. In fact, it doesn't have to be pair. I mean, like, you know, maybe it could be one people, two lectures going on in the same classroom, and 60 people want to listen to this lecture, and 60 people want to listen to some other lecture. We could use CDMA. Again, think, you know, one lecture could be in Chinese, and one could be in English. Right? As long as we correctly do the code, people are not confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, what it did was the formula says that they tell you add up everything, and when you add up, um, then uh, yeah, you will get minus one. In second is in second half. This one you will get second slot. You will get slot zero and slot one. Let's see the numbers are kind of opposite. Of, yeah, slot zero is first. Yeah, so slot zero you will get um, whatever you sent actually minus, and the slot one would be that one. So this is kind of reverse here. This is slot one. This is slot zero. Does CDMA use parity to bit error correction and all that? No, actually, hey, thing. The codes are actually much more protected than parity. So the codes, if you use all 10 bits and you use 1,000 users, there is no protection. But suppose there are, there you use 10 bit code, only two users. I mean, you are sending eight redundant bits. So there's a lot of redundancy. So it will correct lots of errors. Well, I mean, you don't correct it, but basically what, as I said before, the numbers will not come out perfect, but they will be, if any time is more than five, you say it is 10. You know, if more or less than five, it is something. So, so that is how it, it works, is that you take a lot of interference. <laughs>